Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. <clears throat> Sam I be Angie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. Well, welcoming you to the massive Fukushima update. And if for any reason you haven't already hit subscribe and hit share on this, now, now, now is the time to do it because nothing helps this show grow more than you doing that. That's what helps. That's what helps us grow. And that's what helps us reach more people with the information that really matters. Because let's face it, it's not getting to most people here. And here we're going to go and uh, let me get the right screen up with our massive Fukushima update. Rocking out to some ministry. Uh, Japan's $320 million <clears throat> gamble at Fukushima is an underground ice wall. Now, you're going to wonder why in the world is he leading with an ice wall? Is he trying to bore me out of listening to anything that he has to say whatsoever? No, not really. Um, although, as I sometimes do just that. Um, all jokes aside, um, what they're doing here is using technology that you commonly find in the construction of subways, for instance, they will oftentimes freeze the wall to prevent water from coming inwards when they're trying to construct. It's never been used in the scale and the, to, to, the, to the magnitude that they're trying to make it work in Japan. And the reason is because these tanks are leaking in part because they use such great wisdom that they uh, put rubber seals on the tanks. So, of course, the, the, the water, particularly uh, corrosive water, will eat its way out. Not to mention the plant is still leaking like a water balloon with a hole in it. <coughs> so what they've done, excuse me, what they've done is bet a fortune of the, that's annoying isn't it a fortune of the people's money on this ridiculous wall in order to simply placate people uh, to 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 make them think that everything is going to be just fine when in fact everything is the exact opposite of just fine let's look at this um, again all this water rushing into the sea is creating a nuclear disaster in the pacific uh, much of which is being hidden from you Look how annoying this ad is. That's annoying. That's how to get people not to go to your site. The part above ground doesn't look like much. A few silver pipes running in a straight line dwarfed by a far more massive scarred reactor buildings near, but nearby. More impressive is what is taking place underneath. An underground wall of frozen dirt, it says, on the unseen beneath, uh, 100 feet deep and nearly a mile in depth intended to solve a runaway water crisis threatening the devastated Fukushima nuclear power station. Now, keep in mind, they talk about this like it was some unforeseen disaster. It was not some unforeseen disaster. As a matter of fact, it was predicted <clears throat> by a, a number of very intelligent people that an earthquake of this magnitude would strike that area within the time zone that this plant was open. It's been warned about. It was warned about way before it ever happened. And did anybody listen? No, absolutely no one listened at all. That's why we're looking at the problem we have now with this ridiculous squandering of taxpayer money happening here. Officially named the Landside Impermeable Wall, and the Landslide maybe, <clears throat> the letter known simply as the ice wall. The project sounds like a finance, like a fanciful idea from science fiction or a James Bond film, but it is about to become a reality in an ambitious and controversial bid to halt an unrelenting flood of groundwater into the damaged reactor building since the disaster five years ago. Um, it says here that uh, the earthquake and the tsunami caused a triple meltdown. And it did. And I'm highlighting that for a reason. There's a reason that that right there matters so much. And that reason is because we know that, uh, of course, some of the reactor problems and meltdowns, melt outs, and melt through were the core of the 
blue black goo all over Japan and Tokyo. We know for sure that some of that was caused by the tsunami that eliminated the water pumps. We get that. But there's something hidden in here that needs to be addressed. And that is that the earthquake itself, prior to the tidal wave, created a meltdown in at least one of the reactors. Therefore, we know that earthquakes, aside from tidal waves, can create nuclear disasters. And that matters because we're going to be going over in a little bit about the number of sizable, noticeable, important earthquakes that are about through our rock a lot of places in the world. So this should be a wake-up call to a lot of people, that sentence right there. Built by the central government at a cost of 35 billion yen, that's $320 million. And again, that's where Trump's right about them devaluing their currency, by the way. The ice wall is intended to seal off the reactor buildings within a vast rectangular-shaped barrier of man-made permafrost. If it becomes successfully operational as soon as autumn, frozen soil will act as a dam to block new groundwater from entering the buildings. It will also help stop leaks of radioactive water in the Pacific Ocean. The ice wall, it says, however, has been widely criticized as an expensive and overly complex solution. Such concerns emerged last, last month after the plant's operator announced that the section that was switched on more than four months ago had yet to fully freeze. Now, they're going ahead and putting in this ice wall. <clears throat> when the section of ice wall that they already have, as you can see right there, it doesn't properly work. It said the reactor buildings are vulnerable to an influx of groundwater because of how the operator, Tokyo Electric Power, that's TEPCO, that's GE, that's where you should never put your money. If you're in a stock or a mutual fund that they're in, get out. Uh, built the plant in the 1960s, which they were warned not to, by cutting away a hillside to place it closer to the sea so that the plant could pump water in more easily. That also put the buildings in contact with a deep layer of permeable rock filled with water, mostly rainwater and melted snow. In other words, they literally built it on sand. Remember the biblical analogy, you built the house on sand? They really did. <laughs> and now they're wondering why they're having trouble. Five robots, robots, by the way, we've covered this repeatedly on the show, were sent into reactor buildings and have failed to return because of high radiation and obstruction from debris. The destruction from debris is to be expected, but what's not to be expected is that the radioactivity is so high that it fries the components in a robot. We, and this has been, this has been admitted by TEPCO, we do not have the technology needed to be able to solve this problem, and we're winging it. We're absolutely winging it. Meanwhile, the uh, the poison and the toxins are being washed into our food supply and our air and our oceans on a daily basis. And this is affecting health in America as well. Make no mistake about it. We've covered the increase in cancers that are happening uh, way, way, way above and beyond what we've ever seen before. And this is only just starting. The water has also created, it says, a waste management nightmare. And uh, obviously, I mean, they need to come up with something. So they do, they do an ice wall. Because TEPCO, it says, uh, damn pop-ups, must pump it out into holding tanks as it enters the buildings to prevent it from overflowing into the Pacific. The company says that it has built more than 1,000 tanks that now hold more than 800 thousand tons of radioactive water that would fill 320 olympic sized swimming pools so their great plan here seems to be the ice wall the is it's a high technology bid to break the cycle by installing what might be the world's largest freezer yeah what could possibly go wrong pipes almost 100 feet long have been sunk into the ground at roughly three foot intervals and filled with a brine solution super cooled to minus 30 degrees Celsius or 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Each pipe is supposed to freeze a column of soil about a foot and a half in radius, large enough to reach the ice column created by its neighboring pipes. This sounds like an expensive gamble. And someone says here, it's a, according to Asby Brown, it's a Hail Mary play. 
and Japan researcher SafeCast, an independent radiation radiation monitoring group for people letting you know how bad you're being poisoned. TEPCO underestimated the groundwater problem in the beginning. And of course, now they're worried because the 2020 Olympics are going to be there, uh, which of course is going to increase the nuclear poisoning all over. But what they're not going to do is let these people know just how dangerous it is. They'll, they'll raise the limits of what is acceptable and then go ahead and say that, see, look, it, it falls within the normal range. And then when they get cancer in 20 years, they'll say, you know, it must have been something uh, in the air. And they won't say what, like their own poisonings. Friends, that moves us on to just what this is doing. Um, we talk all the time about how cancers are going up through the roof in Japan. They're going up through the roof in um, California, where you should never live on the coast. Oregon, Alaska, we're seeing... We're seeing cancer rates go through the roof. Well, again, the, the uh, dilution does not help pollution in terms of radioactivity. It goes into the fish and it goes directly into us. There's no dilution process when the radioactivity lasts for millions of years. So this is from the Ashahi uh, Simbom. Man's leukemia deemed a result of his work at the Fukushima plant. Now keep in mind, that this has only been five years ago. And we're, we were told that cancers, you know, remember the cancers from this would take years to develop if they ever came around, right? Well, how did that go? Um, it looks like an epic fail to me, according to this poor man, unless his life doesn't mean anything. The labor ministry said a man who developed leukemia by helping clean up efforts at the crippled Fukushima number one power plant is entitled to work-related compensation. Well, how very white of them. It marks the second such case since the 2011 disaster. And there's also been a number of other cancers of people that they, you know, that they, they've got no help at all. Imagine this, and don't just hear the words that I'm saying and let it just drift into the great ether or nowhere. Hear them, friends, hear them. Imagine going to the doctor and finding out that the doctor says, hey, you've got, bl you've got blood cancer, you've got leukemia. This could spread anywhere into your body. This is likely going to kill you. You get to go into the hospital all the time. You get radiation treatments. You're going to be sick. You're going to be miserable. Your quality of life will forever be diminished. If you do survive this, you're going to look like you aged 20 years. Imagine hearing that. Because that's what radioactivity does, and that's what's happening to us. It's just happening to Japan first. It's not being diluted here. Don't let them tell you that. The Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare recognized that the cancer was due to exposure at radiation at the facility and said the government will cover his medical expenses. The ministry said August 19th, that was my dear mom's birthday, that the man who is in his mid-50s, that's it, was involved in removing debris and repairing machinery that handled radioactive water at the plant between April 2011, a month after the triple meltdown. His accumulative radiation exposure was 54.4 millisieverts. So, you know, that, that, that's so much for the, uh, for the we've got this under control, you'll be fine argument. The man worked as a contractor for TEPCO, that's GE, that's who brings such great things to life, what they bring this man, cancer. Um, he was diagnosed with leukemia January 2015 and filed application for workers' accident compensation at the Fukushima Labor Standards Inspection. It's a branch of the ministry. Under the ministry's guidelines, eligibility, if I can talk, for work-related compensation in such cases is granted if leukemia is diagnosed after the person worked more than a year in the assignment. So if you just get juiced once, it doesn't matter. Was, you know, you haven't been there a year. Only if your annual dose is more than five millisieverts. So see how they hide that? Did, did you catch that? If you haven't been there at least a year and you just, you know, maybe helped out, you were, you were a temp worker and you got good and juiced because uh, there was a radioactive release or you got too close to something or you ran the wrong machine and you get cancer, which can happen very easily from one mega dose of radioactivity, guess what? You don't count. The government does nothing for you. You must have picked that cancer up, you know, from, from the great unknown or something. Does that, sound, does that sound like a company you want to invest in? Because that's GE, that's TEPCO. The ministry's decision to grant compensation in this case came after a panel of experts offered their opinion on the matter. Um, 
friends, this is the beginning of the end. Compensation in such cases was first granted in October to a man in his early 40s. Imagine that. Diagnosed with leukemia July 2014. He had 16 millisieverts. In other words, he's going to have such an aggressive cancer that uh, oh, he did a miracle. Friends, you're listening to the Fast of Fukushima update here on The Correct News. Brought to you by this place, the uh, Seacrest Motel. Behind there is Cedar Point. If Christelle was in here, we should tell you about Cedar Point. Because Christelle's birthday is today, or it's just ending. And uh, she's going to Cedar Point with some friends tomorrow. And guess what? If they if they need to crash, they're going to crash here. Why? Well, because the Hotel Breakers is going to charge them hundreds of dollars. Seacrest Motel is going to be way under $100. And if you tell them you listen to the correct views, you'll be amazed. You might even get this for under 80 bucks, under 70 bucks, maybe, maybe. I don't know. What you got to do is you got to say, hey, I heard about, I heard about you from the correct views. You're going to get an amazing discount. And that discount is going to come to you because you're a listener of this show. So tell the correct, uh, tell the Seacrest Motel you listen to the correct views and enjoy the benefits from it. Uh, friends, a lot of you know we cover our world nuke news here, um, not just <clears throat> Fukushima. And we're going to get into some of the world nuke news. A lot of people, of course, worried about the big I, the how does this affect me and my family. I, got, I forget what the philosopher was that said the average Roman is concerned about the stone in his own shoe. And this is true. So what is the, the, the stone in our shoe here, as it were, related to this? Well, how about America? How about your doorstep? How about what's going on right here, friends? More problems uncovered at nuclear fuel plant near Columbia. This is in South Carolina. That'd be America for you Russia fans. An atomic safety investigation at the Columbia Nuclear Fuel Factory uncovered additional problems this week as inspectors uncovered more radioactive material had built up in the plant than they previously knew about. In other words, they told the people to go to work and uh, everything is fine, there's no danger, you're safe. Meanwhile, there was a small error <clears throat> and now you're probably going to get cancer. Oops, sucks to be you. An air pollution control system pipe potentially contained high uranium. Keep in mind, <clears throat> uranium is one of the worst. It remains radioactive in your in the body and in the world for millions of years. And it could cause a nuclear accident at the Westinghouse plant on Bluff Road, records show. <clears throat> the amount of uranium found in the pipe might have exceeded a federal safety limit, according to the federal event notification report. Now, what's even worse is that the uh, the reports are already too high. I mean, the, the standards are already too high. They're only that high, not because they're safe, but because otherwise they wouldn't be allowed to open them. So it's easier just to lie and say that they're safe because there's a lot of money involved. The other problem here is, and I don't think people know this, uranium isn't necessarily inherent to the Earth as, <clears throat> as something that's supposed to be is something that was intrinsic to being from you. Uranium is thought to have come to us from exploding stars and massive radioactive events throughout uh, the eon time. And um, it explodes, of course, and sends out this uranium and along with other elements, the elements that make up you and I, for instance. And over the course of time, they're buried deep within the earth. And they with few exceptions, caused mankind very little problem. The reason mankind didn't live when uranium was uh, was higher in content, closer to the surface, was because it kills life. Time brought it into the earth and made it so that it wasn't a threat to man. Man brings uranium back out of the earth and decides to draw energy and creates the very problem that nature itself, under the guidance of God, which I believe in, many of you don't, nature itself has hidden. And it's hidden it for a reason. It's deadly. So what did we do? We brought it back. Reminds me of a Jurassic Park where they said that God kills dinosaurs. And what's man do bring dinosaurs back? I'm paraphrasing. Man buries uranium. Or God buries uranium. What does man do? Man brings uranium back. Here at 4.20 in the morning. Um, I'm going to go on with this for a second, friends, because it matters. This is this is, this is uh, Americans here. We're talking about right in our own country. 
The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission became aware of the problem Tuesday, about five weeks after Westinghouse notified the agency that uranium had built up in another part of the air pollution scrubber system. Records show that in that case, the amount of uranium found in the scrubber was three times higher than the federal safety limit. This week's discovery, like the uranium buildup that surfaced in July, did not pose any danger to the surrounding community or worker, and no workers were harmed. Don't you love how they always say that? One of the most dangerous toxins known to man floating around. Of course, there could be other problems that they don't know about, and they'll just say later on that that was safe too, right? Westinghouse officials say they are working diligently to understand why the uranium had built up to make improvements. We're trying to figure out diligently why Westinghouse was even allowed to build such a thing. How about that? How about we shut it down while there's still time to uh, maybe, maybe, maybe save some of us from the uh, the insanity and death that is our nuclear power and a nuclear weaponry for that matter. The sleuthjournal.com. The Earth's crust will be shaken by more than a thousand earthquakes that humans can feel in 2016. As, uh, as the ad up there shows a woman uh, being shaken. That's hilarious. Um, you live in a world, friends, where we are able to predict where earthquakes are going to be and to some degree how badly they're going to hit. And yet we are building nuclear power plants on active fault zones and denying that this is a problem when we see that it was a problem at Fukushima and we see earthquakes happening (coughs) more often. Said, did you know that our planet will be hit by more than 100,000 earthquakes of a magnitude three or greater this year alone? Earlier today, I came across a report that contained this amazing fact, but it was so incredible that I felt the need to go and verify it myself. So I went to the official U, official USGS website and found that this is actually true. Overall, there are about half a million earthquakes around the globe each year, but it is only when a quake is about a magnitude three or higher that humans actually feel them. And the very large earthquakes in Italy and Myanmar within the last 24 hours uh, demonstrated, and uh, when this article was written, the shaking of our planet is getting worse. And this is something that I have written about over and over again. Now, I, that's why it matters. A, a free earthquake, to be fair, probably isn't going to damage a nuclear power plant, probably being the operative word there. But we weren't seeing threes even this common. So maybe in a few years we'll see five. Seven is being more common. And that matters because not only do they build these nuclear power plants for to run for 30 or 40 years, but then they go ahead and they renew them. They renew them whether or not they're going to be safe or not, because that's what the bottom line wants. So they just lie and say that they're safe, even though we're seeing more and more earthquakes of a bigger variety happening all over the world. We need to start addressing these questions because these are there aren't too many things that can do more damage to a community than a major earthquake. And again, we're seeing um, he talks about what's happening in Italy and uh, the number of people that have died in the earthquakes. Talks about what we're seeing all over the world and here. The trouble is, and I'm not going to get into all of these because it doesn't really matter where they are so much is that they are happening all over the place. The Yellow Yellowstone, the New Madrid earthquake, uh, one directly behind the New World Trade Center. We're seeing them all over the world. And guess what? We have nuclear power stations all over the world. So everybody's talking about what ISIS, or Daesh, we call them on the show, would do to nuclear power stations if they were to get their vile hands on it. Well, let me ask you something. Are we doing anything about the threat that we actually know is happening? Because it doesn't look like we are to me. It looks like we're just going after the dollar, regardless of what it's actually doing to us. Um, Let me go to this real quick. Zero hedge. Obama lied. New details confirm the $400 given to Iran was indeed a hostage ransom. Now... I don't want to say that the people's lives that this saved in Iran from the, from the prison that the pig-sucking scum leaders of Iran, yes, I said it, um, 
dish out on a regular basis. I'm not saying that their life doesn't matter because their life does greatly matter. What I'm saying is if you if you give money to terrorists who are taken hostages, especially this much money, to terrorists and terrorist regimes that have taken hostages, then you encourage them to take more hostages, to get more money in the future, because now they know that you're going to pay. Um, to put this in perspective, I was watching, anybody watch Mr. Robot? There was a scene in it where um, the one girl says to another girl, a guy walks into a bar and uh sits down and talks to a lady and after a little while says oh, if i gave you a million dollars would you sleep with me and the lady says a million dollars you would give me a million dollars to sleep with you i might do that yeah i'd do that and then the guy says well how about if i give you a dollar to sleep with you? and she says well what kind of girl do you think i am and he goes we've already established that now we're just working out a price that analogy can be used here. <clears throat> if terrorists know that you're going to pay money, then they're going to keep kidnapping, and they're going to work out more and more clever ways to get money from you. And this is what Trump had warned about, and this is what Trump was right about. Iran is a terrorist nation who is building a nuclear power station, which is likely going to be used to terrorize Israel and the West with. Even if it's not, it is not, might be, it is going to experience a cataclysmic earthquake and meltdown and melt out and melt through, exactly like Fukushima. It's going to take out more Arabs than a million angry Zionists, and nobody's talking about it. You cannot build a nuclear power plant here. It is scientifically unsound. It has nothing to do with Allah. For the self-described most transparent administration ever, writes Tyler Durden, with the best name ever, it appears keeping the line straight is becoming harder and harder. Having slammed the press, Donald Trump and anyone who dare mention the lack of logic in paying a $400 million ransom for four Iran hostages, WSJ reports that Tuesday officials have confirmed that Obama lied and, in fact, a tightly scripted exchange of cash was specifically tied to the release of several American prisoners held in Iran. So Trump was right again. As a reminder, and there's links for all of this, the Hill reported that President Obama chastised the press for their coverage of the payment, noting that the deal with Iran, when he lied, this is what he said, was announced months ago as a larger diplomatic settlement. This wasn't some nefarious deal. Obama lied. It's been interesting to watch the story surface, the president said. Some of you may recall we announced these payments in January, many months ago. There wasn't a secret. We announced them to all of you. What we have is the manufacturing of outrage and a story that we discussed in January. You could just hear him saying it. The notion that we should somehow start now is a high-profile way and announce it to be the world, even as we are looking into the faces of other families whose loved ones are being held hostage. We don't pay ransom. Well, it defies logic indeed, because having slammed the press for suggesting this was a ransom payment, we discovered that it is exactly what the Justice Department warned. In his remarks, the president did mention, it says, the objections raised by his own appointees within the Justice Department, who said it was going, in fact, uh, raised alarms that the timing of the cash payment would look like ransom. The head of the National <coughs> Security Division at the Justice Department, this is from WSJ, was among the agency's senior officials who objected paying Iran hundreds of millions of dollars in cash at the same time that Tehran was releasing American prisoners. John Carlin, the Senate-confirmed administration appointee, raised concerns when the State Department notified justice officials of a plan to deliver the Iran a plane full of cash, saying it would be viewed as a ransom payment. The U.S. paid Iran $400 million in cash on January 17th as part of a $1.7 $1.7 billion settlement of a failed 1979 arms deal between the U.S. and Iran that was announced that day. So we shouldn't even be paying. Also on that day, Iran released four detained Americans in exchange for the U.S. releasing from prison or dropping charges against Iranians charged of violating U.S. laws. 
the objection of senior Justice Department officials who Obama hired to listen to but doesn't, was that Iranian officials were likely to view the $400 million payment as ransom, thereby undercutting the long-standing U.S. policy that the government doesn't pay ransoms for American hostages. The reason for that is uh, it's a concern that paying ransom could, ex- could encourage more Americans to become targets of hostage takers. While the denials kept coming in from the White House, however, the Wall Street Journal now reports new details of the $400 million U.S. payment to Iran earlier this year depict a tightly scripted exchange specifically tied to the release of several American prisoners held in Iran. U.S. officials wouldn't let Iranians take control of the money until a Swiss Air Force plane carrying three American Free, three freed Americans departed from Tehran. Once that happened, an American Iranian, an Iranian cargo plane was allowed to bring the cash back to Geneva's airport that day. President Barack Obama and other U.S. officials said the payment didn't amount to ransom because the money was owed by the U.S. to Iran as part of a long-standing dispute, of course, linked to the failed arms deal. It was uh, from the 1970s. U.S. officials have said that the prisoner release and cash transfer took place through two separate diplomats. But the handling, look at this, of the payment and its connection to the release of the Americans have raised questions among lawmakers and administration critics. One of the Americans released in January as part of the exchange, a Catholic pastor named Saeed Abedini, said he and the other American prisoners were kept waiting in Marabad Airport for more than 20 hours. He said he was told by a senior Iranian intelligence official that the time of their departure was contingent <clears throat> upon the movements of the second plane. In other words, they were tied together. The proof is right here, and it says, to summarize, it is unclear where Donald Trump might have caught the video clip um, of this or not, but the cash disclosed is what the Iran claims is in light of this article, an alleged payment, but the footage was widely discussed several months ago. So Obama lied. The administration did indeed make a $400 million in exchange for the release of four hostages. If it sounds like a ransom, talks like a ransom, then it is. And Trump was right. Finally, this is far from over. The Wall Street Journal concludes Republican lawmakers have charged that the $400 million payment equated to a ransom paid by the White House to gain the release of Americans. This is going to be a slippery slope, friends. This is going to be a real problem. And I'm about to get into what what Iran has been doing to us with this great money ever since. I just wanted to do real quick before I get into what Iran is doing and further proving Trump right. See these? We got these? We got these. These stickers look amazing. And five dollars gets you one. Seven dollars gets you both. Get a hold of me at the correct views of hotmail.com and let me know that you want to support the show. I'll get these stickers out to you. And get them in the mail. You can uh, <clears throat> put the money on PayPal and the horns be at uh, at uh, yahoo.com, or just uh, let me know in my email and we can take care of the business that way. The correct views of hotmail.com will get these awesome looking stickers out to you. Um, Reuters.com, Iran vessels make high-speed intercept of U.S. ship, <clears throat> U.S. official. So we're supposed to believe that Iran is not going to use their nuclear power plant for anything but peaceful purposes, even though Iran has publicly stated that it wants to destroy both Israel and the West. They refer to Americans as pigs. They have funded terrorist groups all over the world. And now they're running U.S. ships out of international waters and making business very difficult when we gave them $400 million. If that sounds like it could be a problem to you, that's because it's your tax dollars that went to this so that they could terrorize our men and women in the armed services. Look at this. Four of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps vessels harassed the U.S. warship on Tuesday near the Strait of Hormuz, a U.S. defense official said amid Wednesday's concerns about Iran's posture in the Gulf in the Syrian civil war. In other words, they're our enemy. We gave them money to help them be an enemy that could hurt us even more. 
The official, speaking on the condition of anonymity, said on Wednesday that the two of the Iranian vessels came within 300 yards, that's three football fields for you Kesha fans, of the USS Nitsi in an incident that was unsafe and unprofessional, as the Iranians usually are. The vessels harassed the destroyer by conducting a high-speed intercept and closing within a short distance of Nitsi despite repeated warnings. IRGC, the Islamic Republic's Praetorian Guard, is suspicious of U.S. military activity near Iran's borders and appears to be sticking to a familiar posture in the Gulf that predates last year's nuclear accord. In other words, give us the money to nuclear harm our nuclear, to use nuclear devices to harm our neighbors, to build a nuclear power plant on a known fault zone that's going to melt it down and kill millions of people. We know this, it's not up in the air. And we're still going to harass you when you do business because you're a stupid American. The United States and other countries are concerned about Iran's support of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and its ballistic missile program and its backing of Shiite militias that have abused civilians in Iraq. Yes, because that's what Iranian scum uh, Shiites usually do, at least from a leadership standpoint. The U.S. Defi- uh, defense official said that in Tuesday's incident, they should have said who this was, the USS Nietzsche tried to communicate with the Iranian vessel 12 times but received no response. Maybe we should have blown them out of the water. And I know you're saying, Sam, you're just being a hothead. Well, let me tell you why. At least I'm not being stupid. You know what stupid is? Stupid is waiting to give us hostages in change, exchange for guarantees that mean nothing from a country that has acted way out of line with anything that you would have if you were an ally of someone. And yet we're giving them $400 million. That to me is far worse than us putting a hole in their ship and letting them limp back to port and realize they don't ever want to do that again. Again, I'm not saying get into a nuclear exchange, but you get near our ship and you don't answer, you're going to to have holes in your ship. I'm not saying sink it, but you're going to have holes in your ship. That brings us to the dumb day of the day. The dumb day of the day, of course. Brought to you by Sticker Junkie. If you don't know what Sticker Junkie is, you're missing out. It's right there. And you'd have to be an idiot to miss it. What are you going to do with Sticker Junkie? You're going to go to Sticker Junkie and you're going to get the best looking stickers that you've ever had. And you're also going to go ahead and get them at a better deal than you ever imagined. Kind of like the Seacrest. I told you you were going to save money. Well, check out here. Do me a favor. Type in correct views or the correct views and check out. And you're going to go ahead and get stickers that look this good, but you're going to get them at a fraction of the price that you would normally be paying because you're a listener of the show. And uh, they bring us the dumb of the day today. The RT article has the North Korea threatens U.S. with nuclear hammers of justice after missile test. Friends, uh, the reason they're getting the dumb of the day is because they don't have a nuclear hammer. They have like a nuclear attack hammer. They might have, like, the nuclear Fisher-Price hammer that you had when you were a little kid, the little plastic, you know, pretty little yellow hand, I think it was. Uh, maybe the, 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 the Fisher-Price hammer, but that's going to be... <laughs> However, the problem with this is bigger than that, because this could spark a nuclear exchange between the China, the, so- uh, the Russia, I almost said the Soviets, and America. And that's the problem. It's not that North Korea is a threat to anybody other than, than themselves. This little tin horn dictator is just going to end up losing his country, even if they were to win the nuclear exchange, because China would likely not allow them to remain in power. And that is, of course, their, their handlers. Pyongyang has dubbed its recent missile test the greatest success and, I bet they said, greatest success and victory. The way they, uh, you got to look up uh, North Korean newscasts, they're hilarious. It threatened the U.S. with nuclear hammers of justice. Oh, wait, we got to do this right. Hold on. They threatened the U.S. with nuclear hammers of justice. State media reports adding that the North has all the resources necessary to battle the U.S. nuclear hegemony. Of course they do. A test fire of strategic marine launch ballistic missile was successfully conducted under the guidance of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, as in un intelligent. The statement from KCNA news agency said, 
Kim appreciated the test fire as the greatest success and victory. The SLBM test fire was successfully carried out without any adverse impact on neighboring countries. Yeah, I'm sure. The North Korean state news agency added that their leader was watching the trajectory of the ballistic missile, which was given the name Pugatsong. The U.S. vicious nuclear threat and blackmail against DPRK only resulted in bolstering up its nuclear attack capability. Hour by hour, and the U.S. mainland and the operational theater in the Pacific are now within striking range. The trouble is they have like three or four missiles that we would see getting here long before they ever got here. They could possibly down one near Hawaii, maybe, but I'm pretty sure Hawaii learned that lesson once. So I'm sure they have Patriots and other um, missile systems to stop such things. All, all this would result in is us likely swatting their nuclear weapons out of the sky and then destroying them. Um, we would have to use... Mm, very limited. I mean, we wouldn't necessarily be able to nuke North Korea because of the uh, proximity, of course, to South Korea, our ally. But we would simply flatten North Korea after we were done swatting their flies out of the sky. Because you got to remember, their nuclear program hardly even works, and we've covered that repeatedly here. Once again, Pyongyang threatened its rivals, in particular U.S. imperialists and the South Korean puppet group which are currently staging a joint military exercise aiming at a preemptive nuclear strike at the DPRK with huge nuclear strategic assets involved. What, what they don't say is that uh, while America is oftentimes in the wrong harassing other countries, they are not here. North Korea has threatened us ever since the ceasefire. America has actually largely left North Korea alone and they have continually started a fight with us. It's one of the few areas where America has not started a fight. The North Korean people would deal merciless blows at them with nuclear hammers of justice. I love that. So that nails of injustice by may not come out again once an opportunity is given now that the DPRK has a place, a substantial means of capable of standing up against the U.S. nuclear hegemony. A North Korean submarine test launched a ballistic missile in the East China Sea on Wednesday as the U.S. and South Korean militaries were conjuncting, conducting joint, joint drills at Pyongyang, which they think is a threat. Well, maybe if they would stop threatening other people, they wouldn't be threatening themselves. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangie signing off. You can support me by checking out Patreon. That's right, Patreon. I'm on Patreon. Uh, you can donate. It would be a huge help if you did. Got these coming to you. Five dollars for one, seven dollars to vote. Correct views of hotmail.com. You can pay at mhornsby at yahoo.com. H O R N S B Y. And uh, leave me a note. Leave me a comment. Hit share. Hit subscribe. These are the things that help the show grow, friends. I am Sam I B. DeGangie. This is the Correct Views. And that was your massive Fukushima thing. Thank you. God bless you.